So what's the Abraham program? Remember how we saw in the first videos that in the beginning of Matthews, Jesus had the title Son of David? That meant that he was the long-awaited Jewish king and messiah. But from the first 12 chapters, we know that he was rejected. And there is a second title, Son of Abraham. And what this means, we're going to see in this video. To truly understand the next section in the Gospel of Matthew, we need to show that there really is a next section. So, here you see the contrast between these two sections. In part 1, Jesus speaks plainly, with very clear words, whereas in part 2, he speaks in mysteries, so that even the disciples do not understand him. Jesus then explains that now he speaks in parables, so they do not understand and do not repent. Jesus' speech in chapter 13 contains then seven strange parables. After 2000 years of Christianity and the seven letters in the book of Revelation, we know that he was prophetically speaking about the church age. So, Jesus was speaking about the church age, but in the first 12 chapters, he was clearly announcing a Jewish kingdom. That's not only a dramatic change in the style, but also in the content. Just after this, John the Baptist leaves the scene. Why is this important? Because Jesus said that John was the last prophet of the period of the law. And although he was great, the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So this means that there is a new entity coming of which the smallest member is greater than the greatest prophet of the age of the law. John had also spoken of himself as the friend of the bridegroom while pointing at Jesus as the bridegroom. But who is the bride then? Well, just have a look at where Jesus focuses now. In chapter 14, 15, he turns to all people, even outside the boundaries of Israel. And this makes no sense given that he told his disciples only to go to the house of Israel, not even to the Samaritans who were kind of cousins to the Jews. And now he is in Tyre. It only proved that after his rejection by the Jews, a radical change is going on because the rejected king is now preparing a mystery new kingdom for the next 2000 years till national Israel comes to repentance. Paul later will reveal the mystery and say in Ephesians 5.32, this mystery is profound and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. But we are not there yet. The church only appears in chapter 16. Let us have a look how Jesus prepares the ground for this new age. The transition is remarkably depicted in three stories, right around chapter 12, 13 and 14. At the end of chapter 12, Jesus makes it clear that he has a new family. It's not our family here on earth, but a heavenly family. In chapter 13, verse 1, he leaves the house, a picture of Israel, and goes to the sea, which illustrates the nations. And then in chapter 14, he calls Peter as the first one to follow him out of the boat to the sea. Later, in chapter 18, Peter will actually get the authority to preach the gospel to the nations. And in Acts 10, we see that he actually is the first one to reach out to the Gentiles. So, in chapter 12, Till 14, Jesus starts the transition. In chapter 15, Jesus himself leaves the geographic boundaries of Israel. And then in chapter 16, he introduces the new thing or entity or family. I will build my church. I will build my ecclesia. This beloved one that is called out of this world to reign with Christ from heaven. But this announcement will not remain without consequences. It's the point of no return. From this moment on, Jesus starts showing his disciples that he will die. And he heads towards Jerusalem for the last time. There he rebukes the religious elite very openly, speaks about prophecies regarding Israel and the nations, and then goes to Calvary to be executed by the Gentiles who are under the influence of the Jews. But in reality, he was dying for Israel and the Gentiles. Their accusation, the king of the Jews. Exactly what he had told Pilate, because he was the king of the Jews. And then three days later in the morning, he rises from the tomb. But nobody from the unbelieving world sees him. More than 500 of his followers see him, touch him, eat with him, 
but the world is perplexed about the empty tomb. His last words to the Jewish leader were, I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Has this happened yet? No. This is yet to come. This was about 2000 years ago. About 2000 years. That's interesting. Very interesting. And that's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching uh, the video and for supporting us by your comments, by your likes. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. But um, if you want to have further information, go to crosspaint.tv. We'd be glad to uh, see you there. And we're already working on Genesis. So this was the first book of the New Testament, Matthews. And now we're starting with Genesis, the first book of the Old Testament. And we're going to see exciting things there. So see you then.